Right, in this video we're going to look at um, one part of the maths that you won't have come across at GCSE but you're expected to be able to do it at A-level and it's called logarithms. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what a logarithm is, why we shouldn't be afraid of them. We're going to look at some of the rules um, of them when we multiply them and divide them or raise them to a power and how we can use these rules and what, well, basically why these rules are so useful for us. So, if we can take a number that we could write in exponent form, so let's just, let's take an example, 10 cubed, that equals 1000. So, what we can say here is 10 is the, the base and 3 is the index. And all this means is that if I go 10 multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10, so multiplying it by 3 times, which is the index, that equals 1000. Hopefully nothing too revolutionary there for you. Now, if we uh, want to write this out as a logarithm, let's just do this, make that a bit smaller. Yeah, sorry, uh, all a logarithm is, is another way of writing this expression out here. So what we could say is that log base 10 of a thousand equals 3. So in our first notation it's the base raised to the index equals a thousand but when we write it out as a logarithm what we're asking is here's the number 10 as our base so what number do I need to raise 10 to in order to get to a thousand and the answer is three. We can have some other examples so if we had uh, log base 2 of 16 what this is asking is what number do I need to raise 2 to in order to get to 16 so 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 so if I raise 2 to the power of 4, I get the answer of 16. So 2 raised to the 4 is 16. Now those were, that's quite a nice easy uh, example because we're just using nice numbers. However, we can use uh, not so nice numbers. So if we have a look at uh, what is the number that I would need to raise 10 to in order to get me to the 500 and if I put that in my calculator um, just as a point of note if you're going log base 10 on your calculator it's just log it doesn't have the base written down um, and if I just put that in that comes out and gives me an answer of 2.69895 nine seven should be approximately equal to I would imagine so again what does this mean uh, it means that if I raise 10 to the power of 2.69897 that will equal 500 now there's just one other um, example I'd like to show you just because it's it's important and it helps us to simplify things out when they're starting to look a little bit more complicated. So if we take, let's stick in base 10, log base 10 of 10, well what does this mean? What number do I need to raise 10 to in order to get 10? And the answer of that is of course 1. Um, we'll see why this is useful because essentially when you've when you're got the base and you're trying to get to the answer, it is always 1. So if we write that out slightly more formally, uh, formally, if I take log of a to get to a, log base a of a, that will equal 1. Now we can see that all a logarithm is is just a different way of writing something out that was in exponent form, such as a to the n equals x, what I could do is I could just rewrite this as saying log base a of x equals n. So now we're going to have a look at the power rule of 
of log of logarithms. Okay, and this goes something like this. So let's just take a normal uh, a logarithm. Let's say that m equals log a of x. Now what I could do here is I could write this out in exponent form, and that will tell me that if I take a and I raise it to the power m, that's going to equal x. Now, if we raise x to the power of something, so let's go x to the power n, I can see that that is going to be a to the power m raised to the power n. So, I've got x to the power n, and I know that that equals a to the m, which is to the power n. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just take logarithms of both of our sides. So we're going to go log base a of x to the n, and that will equal log base a of a to the m n. Now hopefully what you remember is when we've got log base a of a, that's just going to equal 1. So then we're raising this to the power m n, so that should give us log a x to the n just equals m n. Now from the very beginning we can substitute in for m because we know that m equals log a of x. So let's just rewrite this out. Log a x to the n equals log a of x, and all of this is being multiplied by n, so I can write that. And here we've got our power rule. Okay, so nice and simply, all it's actually telling us to do, if I can get a bit more page, is when I've got the number in here being raised to a power, then that's the same as that power multiplying by the logarithm in the first place. Now the second one we're going to have a look at is what happens when we've got things being multiplied inside the logarithm. So this is going to be called, well, let's get the other colour than that, I've been told people can't see the red. Okay here we go, so this is the product rule. And it helps us deal with things if we've got them in the form log a x multiplied by y. So if we've got these two terms in here being multiplied together, how can we rewrite that? So we'll start off by saying let m equal log a of x and let n equal log a of y. So if we write these out in exponent form, this first term becomes a to the power m equals x and our second one becomes a to the power n equals y. So if we multiply these two terms together, that gives me xy is equal to a to the m multiplied by a to the n. And that will tell me that xy is equal to a to the m plus n. Now, if I take logarithms of both sides, so let's just see if we can get the last line back in. That tells us that we're going to have log base e, base a, x, y, is going to equal log a, base a, to the a, to the m plus n. Now, if we use our uh, pr uh, power rule that we've just learnt, we can rewrite this as log a, x, y, and because the term that's in here is being raised to the power, that's the same as taking the power and multiplying it by the logarithm. Now, 
what we've got here is log base a to a. So, what, so what we're asking is what number do I need to raise a to to get to a? And of course the answer there is 1. So that leaves us with log a x y is equal to m plus n. And if we go back to our beginning, what we're saying that m is log a of x and n is log a of y. So if we just rewrite those into here, this will now give us our product rule. So that's log a of x equals log a of y. So what does this tell us? The, if we've got two numbers being multiplied here and we're taking the logarithm of it, then we can just get the logarithm of one and add it to the logarithm of the other. And this one is the product rule. Now the, final, now the final rule we have to be able to deal with is called the quotient rule. And that's going to be looking, taking the form of if we take some log and we've got a division here that we're taking the log of. So very, very similar proof to the uh, previous one. Um, what we'll do is we'll say that we're going to let m equal log a of x and we'll let n equal log a y. Okay, and again if we write these in exponent form that tells us that a to the m equals x and a to the n equals y. Now what we've got here is we want to divide these two so we're going to have because we're going x over y so x over y is going to equal a to the m over a to the n and that equals a to the m minus n. Let's extend the page a bit and come back up so we can see what we're doing. Right, now if we take logarithms of these two, that gives us log a x over y, and that's going to equal log a a to the m minus n. And again, fire our um, uh, power rule, if we're raising to a power here, then that just becomes a multiple of the logarithm. So log a x over y is equal to m minus n log a of a. And again, log a of a is just going to be equal to 1. So that gives us log a x over y. And that will equal, well, if we remember what our first one is, m equals log a of x and n equals log a of y. That tells me that m is log a of x, take away log a of y. And here we've got the quotient rule, where... If we're dividing two things here, then that's the, inside the logarithm, then the, it is just the same as the individual logarithms, or the first uh, logarithm of A, log, logarithm A of X, subtract logarithm A of Y. So, we've just got our three rules, let's just sum this up. Um, the first one is the power rule, so what that says is that if we take some logarithm, 
and we've got x to the power of n, then that's the same as n log a of x. And then we have the product rule. So if we've got terms being multiplied here, then that's just the same as adding up the individual logarithms. And finally, the quotient rule, if we're dividing here, then that's just the same as subtracting the two logarithms.